Hello, uh, Leon Turner here again, uh, this time to talk to you about user management in IQ Vision. To that end, I'm going to run through this using IQ Vision itself to engineer everything. And just to make life difficult for myself, I've got three browsers all set up so that I can demonstrate how the system will eventually look to our three different users. I've only chosen three to try and keep this as simple as I possibly can. Now, to that end, I've already set up the three users. So we've got a manager who can see everything on the site, which is two buildings, Bill, who can only see building B, and Anne, who can only see building A. Now, underneath all of this, what is actually going to be driving this demonstration is a trend site with one big building, which has got three IQ4s in it, and one small building, which has got one IQ4 in it. Uh, none of these obviously exist. They are all just virtual. Um, they've all got a simple little schematic to go with them. As I said, very, very simple, not really relating to very much of anything in the real world, but they, they do go to prove the point. Now, what we're going to be doing is hiding some of this um, and giving them um, hierarchies to use to navigate around the system. And again, to that end, I've set up some hierarchies just so we can see workshop building A and building B in, in a nice hierarchy. And I'll show you how to, to configure that so the, the user's going to only see what they need to see. And that will, in fact, prove the point better than perhaps anything else. I've also got an overview for the, the manager who can see everything. So the first thing we're going to continue to do to set it up, this up is to configure several of the user parts from within the services. So we've got a couple of parts here that we need to pay attention to. One is the user service itself, which you've already seen. One is the role service and one is the category service. We'll start with the category service. That's probably one of the more confusing parts of all of this. And this is where we decide which users can do which things and what part of the system they're going to be able to see and to use and to interact with and we can do this with the category manager so i need to add some categories <clears throat> now i'm going to add three one for each user now you could potentially reuse them every time but we've got one for facilities management which is going to be our uh, buildings manager one for Building A and one for building B. Hopefully you'll see why in a second. So now they will get added in. So when we go back to the category service overview, you can see we've got these at the top and you can have eight of these. Now, this is fairly complex in that we can drill down and give people rights to almost everything they need to potentially need to, to look at, and more importantly, perhaps things they shouldn't look at. So, you know, there are ways and means to chop all this up, but fundamentally my FM is going to want to be able to see pretty much everything. So we'll we'll give him carte blanche. Actually, it doesn't need to see the app, so we'll take that away. Someone needs to be able to look at it. So my admin account swept that up. And files, he's definitely going to need to see within the PX folder. He's going to need to be able to use some of that. So I'm going to include that and histories. Yeah, we definitely want him to see the histories. Now in that, we may need to drill in and make sure he's got adequate rights for some of the, the finer detail he needs. Now amongst those will be the hierarchy service. He's definitely going to need to use that. And that's about it. Now you could see we could give him rights to an awful lot of other things, but we don't really want to. And under drivers, just going to make sure he can see the whole of the trend system underneath, which I'm pretty sure he can. It might need some tweaking, but hopefully not. Now, building A, something similar. We don't want them to see too much. So what we're going to say is the hierarchy service must be usable. That's for both A and B. Uh, they're going to need to be able to see PX pages. So we'll tick both of those. And building A needs to be able to see building A, and building B needs to be able to see B, building B. Now, drilling in, there are some things I don't want them to see. 
So for example, I've put something on there, which is the reset function. I don't want either of them to see that. So I'm going to turn that off for all of them for building A and building B, because I absolutely don't want them to see that. And that will become obvious when we go to the, the graphic. Hopefully, it seems a bit perverse, but you'll be able to see something that's missing. Be able to see that, and for building B, a bit simpler because there's one less. Now I'm going to make sure I save that. Now, the chances are I've probably got this wrong. You can see it's quite complicated or potentially quite complicated and sometimes takes a bit of fiddling. But with a spot of luck, um, perhaps we've nailed it first time. We'll come back and check in a second. OK, so now that is done, we can go to the next stage, which is the roll service. <clears throat> now for this one, again, I'm going to add three rolls. Uh, roll one being the FM. Now, I don't want to make him a super user necessarily. Um, that's the job of the, F, the admin, really. But I do want him to be able to interact, as in read, write, and interact with anything on the screen. So these are our categories. And you can see that's the FM one. So that's what I want him to be able to do with his uh, his view of the the system and I'm going to give him access to the hierarchy which is the device viewer so role two will be building a viewer again we're not going to give him super level access at all we're going to give them read access to building a and the same hierarchy and this one is going to be building b you want them to have read access to building b and the exact same hierarchy it's a bit of a simpler job this one and that is it done now that is all done we're going to go back and finish our configuration of the users themselves so, for example, for the manager, you can see we've got the various roles he might fulfill. FM sort of is a an overarching one from both of those. So I don't need to add him to both of those, although I could. I could have him playing several different roles. Now, something else I'm going to do is I don't really want him seeing the palette in the side tree. And I'll explain what this all looks like in a minute. I don't want him seeing the config tree, the files, definitely not. Yes, he can see the histories. Yes, he can see the hierarchies. Enable view selection, yes. And I'll explain these things in a minute. So I'll save that. And what I'm going to do is give him a nav file in a moment so that that uh, dictates where he, he finally ends up. And while we're here, we'll do the same thing for Bill. So Bill is building B viewer. I don't want him to see too much of any of this. So I'm going to turn pretty much all of it off. Except I'm going to leave the hierarchies open. In fact, I'll leave the histories open as well for this one. And I don't want him to be able to flip between views. So that should restrict what he can see quite significantly. And for Anne, she's building A. Again, going to turn off most of these things. Don't want to see that, that, that. No. I'm going to leave the histories off for Anne. Maybe she's not interested. Uh, mainly so you can see something different when we finally get it working. OK. So the very next thing to do, I'm going to give them a nav file each. Uh, nothing particularly complicated. Make, we'll make a new folder for that.
and this basically just dictates where they land up. So I'm going to call his top view overview, and we'll decide where he ends up, and I'm going to basically go for the top of the tree where there's a, a nice landing page for him. And if I duplicate that and change it, so this will be A. Now A, we don't want to go anywhere near that. We want them to actually land on something appropriate. So for A, we'll plump for one of the controllers under the correct place. So we'll just go for one. And then obviously duplicate that and change it to B. There is only one place they can go, so we'll put that in straight away. And save it, and now I'll assign it. I could have done it in the other order, of course. So Bill. His nav file is B, and her nav file oops, is going to be A. Incidentally, you could have a different nav file for um, one for when they arrive from a desktop computer type thing from a browser, and one when they arrive from a mobile device, should you wish that to be different. I am not going to demonstrate that, but you can do that. Okay, and that should be it. Okay, so we have now finished our configuration, and this is the fun bit where we get to test it all. In order to do that, I've got three browsers, all so that I can just log in to three different accounts at the same time on the same laptop, just so it's a bit more obvious. So if we start with Anne, who, as you probably remember, has the lowest rights, hopefully. Right. best configuration in the world won't stop you putting the wrong password in of course so there we go uh, and very simple little uh, dashboard if you like with a few graphs and controls if you'll notice she can't right click I know obviously you can't see this on the screen but I'm right clicking and she has no access to do anything on there uh, I'll put a little telltale on there so we can see it's Anne and which uh, building she's into she does have access to the device viewer and this is her means to navigate around so she can go to all of the various controllers of interest to her okay but that's all she can see and she can't actually affect anything although she can choose what she can see which may or may not be desirable you can always on any of these things put a, a rectangle over the top of any controls you don't want people to see so uh, an opaque box. A bit crude, but it works really well. Right, so now we move on to Bill. And hopefully you can see Bill has a slightly more inclusive view. He can see the histories. He can see his device view. Well, exactly the same device view, but if you notice critically, it's a different one to Anne. So his view of the same device viewer is different to Anne's. It's been um, filtered so he can only see what he needs to see within his building. So if we go back to Anne's one, if I can find it, you can see the two views are different. So the hierarchy has been filtered. Once again, though, Bill has not got any right click access to anything. And if we go to the manager, so he lands at a different place. He's got a much more inclusive view up here, so he's got access to exactly the same device viewer, but now his includes all of everything. So the device viewer, I've reused it three times, uh, and the results are different depending on what people are allowed to see. He can see all the histories as before. He can see some of the files that may or may not be necessary, perhaps and he can get access to certain parts of the config tree, including the hierarchy service. 
so we can see what he's doing. Again, you may or may not want people to do that. And we turned off some of these other nav buttons down the left. Uh, if there were other views, he's got ability to see those. As we said, we left that switched on. So he can actually go off and see the point view widget, although there's nothing to see, so it's not going to work. Uh, he can see alarms and so on if there were any, which there are not. Apart from that, he has the exact same view. So this PX page is exactly the same from any one of our three viewers. In fact, I've used I've reused it many times throughout this station. So that view is been has been relativized using the tags actually. So I don't have to redo everything. Now you'll hopefully see the manager has much, much more rights. So he can actually override things, however ridiculous that may seem for some of these points. He can override them from here. Um, you also see he's also got a, a button push to reset. Now I mentioned that in the preamble. So that push to reset button is it's on the graphic. It doesn't appear for either Anne or Bill, only him. So he can push and reset the bit of kit that we're looking at. There we go. Um, oh, I should probably mention the, the way that has been done. So the way I've hidden that button. So the way I've hidden that button is on the PX page, you'll see down here, the degrade behavior is hide on that on that binding. So that button disappears when someone doesn't have access to it. You can choose to disable it, which will make it just into a gray box. They can't operate, but um, that might actually be more annoying than just hiding it. So I've chosen to hide it when people don't have access. And once again, if I just show you that all the PXs, well, they're exactly the same PX, are driven by tax. So that ends the demonstration. Uh, I hope that was useful. And thank you very much for listening. And um, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Bye bye.